Hello, Silvano Guy here with Pensando System. I am here today with my friend and colleague Diego Krupnikov to discuss about the evolution of data center network with particular reference on how services are implemented. Welcome, Diego. Let's get to it. Uh, thank you, Silvano. A pleasure to uh, talk to with you, as always. So it's quite common to uh, denote network traffic in data centers as either north-south or east-west. North-south traffic is related to communication between a node inside a data center and the outside world. In contrast, uh, east-west traffic refers to the interaction among internal nodes. Now, traditionally, the most resource-demanding network services have been exclusively applied to north-south traffic. This includes, among others, uh, firewalling, encryption, load balancing, traffic monitoring, etc. And these services are very commonly implemented by dedicated appliances. Now, given the nature of north-south traffic, these appliances are normally placed close to the outbound interfaces of the data center, allowing a great topological match for the traffic that they must process. However, there's a well-established trend in more modern data centers that poses a challenge to this paradigm. New customer demands and regulatory rules, uh, driven in part by the nature of hyperscale public and hybrid clouds, call for the deployment of these services also for east-west traffic. But Diego, I understand that east-west traffic can greatly exceed north-south traffic in terms of volume and quantity. So how do we plan to deal with that? Exactly. East-west traffic can be orders of magnitude bigger than north-south. And it's also by definition scattered across the data center topology. As a result, the appliance model that we discussed becomes very inefficient for east-west traffic if at all viable. Scalability becomes a challenge for two major reasons. First, there's the network traffic demand as packets would have to go back and forth through the appliance on their way from source to destination. And secondly, the load on the appliance itself would rapidly become a choke point as the size of the data center grows. The natural solution to this problem is to deploy these services in a distributed manner at the actual nodes on the edge of the data center topology. This distributed edge services approach eliminates both of the scalability issues that we discussed. The network traffic problem is trivially solved by virtue of the fact that services are now applied at the origin and or destination of the traffic. And with respect to the load, the service processing resources would grow together with the size of the data center as each additional node comes with its own share of service processing horsepower. This sounds good, but in practice, how do we implement them at the edge in a scalable way? Where do we host them? Yeah, well, once we establish that the distributed edge services are the way to go for east-west traffic, the common question is the one that, you, uh, that you're asking. What would be the choice of the most suitable technology to implement these services at the end node? Clearly, the hardware appliance model that we mentioned before would be cost prohibitive. In this context, one may consider leveraging the processing power of the general purpose CPUs of the end nodes themselves. However, analysis shows that this approach may not be the best. The power efficiency of x86 CPUs for most of these services is less than ideal. But most importantly, the objective of data center administrators is to leverage as much as possible of the server's CPU capacity for billable workloads, rather than spending it on infrastructure processing. So, these two possibilities are out. With these two possibilities out, what is left? Where do we do this? Well, the natural alternative is to look at domain-specific hardware for this mission. Over the past few years, there has been an increased trend around the adoption of domain-specific solutions. Most notably, GPUs became the go-to-market approach for high-performance computing and machine learning, accompanied by TPUs and some other examples. This is due to the cost and power efficiency associated with the application of a purposely designed solution. In the same spirit, domain-specific hardware for network processing 
appears to be a great match for the deployment of network services at the data center edge. For example, P4 programmable data planes strike the perfect balance of flexibility and high performance power efficiency that is tailored for the task at hand. To summarize, it's our belief that distributed edge services using a domain-specific solution is the most cost and power efficient approach for the modern cloud and the enterprise data center. Diego, thank you so much for this very clear explanation. I hope to have you soon again for another video. Don't forget to follow me on my GitHub page blog. It is silvanoguy.github.io. Also click on the button to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope this was interesting. Thank you so much for listening.